Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for my You, Me and Him band! Verse 6 says, 
let everything that has breath praise the Lord. You know, the Bible doesn't give us an option. In other words, it's like, if you have breath, you better praise the Lord. Amen. How many of you have breath here? Amen. Who is like unto a God? It's all I am I'm holding on 
you see that? There's no other name. There's no other name, no other name like Jesus. Isn't it easy to say that? There's no other name, no other name like Jesus. There's no other name, no other name like Jesus.
June 26th, an unforgettable evening in my life. It was our first outdoor concert. After months of preparation and a large sum of money invested just for that one night, expectations were really high. With the sky as our roof, the last thing we wanted on that day was rain. The eighth song had just begun and the skies opened up on us. The concert came to an abrupt stop. All we could see from where we stood was people running for shelter or walking out as there was no way to hide from the downpour. There was no backup plan, so we simply went backstage and thought we'd wait for the rain to stop. But it only got worse. After having waited for a minute or two, I thought to myself, why should this rain stop our worship? So we went back on stage and started to sing that beautiful song, Give Thanks with a Grateful Heart. I've sung that song over a hundred times, but for the first time in my life, I actually understood how difficult it was to sing, let the weak say I am strong when you're actually weak. But with faith we continued to declare that we are strong, and the rain stopped that very moment. The crowds that were assumed to have left came back all wet and continued to glorify God for His mighty act. If there's one thing I've learned from that day, it would be this. Even in times of trials and disappointments, never stop your praise, never stop your song. Our God is mighty to save. He will never let us down. Savior, He can move the mountain. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Lord, take me just as you find me, Lord. So take me as you find me. Sing. All my fears and failures. Fill my life again. Oh, fill my life again. I give my life to follow. But everything I believe in. Now I surrender, I surrender For my Savior, He can build a mountain My God is mighty to save, He is mighty to save Forever, author of salvation and conquered the grave Jesus conquered the grave Savior He can move the mountain Oh, any mountain He is mighty to save Forever and ever 
privilege for me to come before you and uh, share a little thought that the Lord put in my heart. There's a beautiful incident in John chapter 5. It talks about Jesus visiting the pool of Bethesda where a man is uh, laid there for, the, for about 38 years. It's a long time. 38 years by the side of the pool waiting for a healing, waiting for a miracle, waiting for a change, waiting for a difference, waiting for God to intervene. But all hopes were lost for 38 years. You see, when uh, problems like sickness come and attack us, it leaves a very big bearing on our life. Only people who go through that will understand. I always believe sickness brings three effects. Number one, Sickness brings suffering. The pain of sickness, only people who go through will know. In Tamil, there's a proverb which says, Talavaliyam Vaitavaliyam, Aungamuluk Vandadan Teriyam. This man has been going through that for 38 years. Number two, I believe uh, sickness also brings sorrow. The sadness, the sorrow, words can never explain. Number three, any kind of sickness brings a sense of solitude. It makes you feel so lonely. Some time ago, there was a lady in our church who met with an accident and she was admitted to the ICU. And I went there to pray for her and she was all alone by herself in the ICU. And after I prayed for her, she said, uh, Brother, will you please go down to my husband and my children. This, the bed next to me is unoccupied. Please ask them to come and lie down by my side. I feel so lonely. When you go through the valley of sickness, it brings solitude. The man, the unnamed man, behind the pool of Bethesda, was going through suffering, sorrow, and solitude, no doubt. But God's plan for any of us, including the man, by the pool of Bethesda, was not that we should die in our sickness and our pain. He has a plan that's far, far bigger than us. Amen. If you look at the situation, I believe this man waiting for a miracle was going through four challenges. Very quickly, I want to elucidate those four challenges before you. Number one, this man faced the challenge of lost chances. 38 years, many times the pool was stirred. But every chance he got, he lost. There's a beautiful scripture you read in John chapter 5. The infirm man answered Jesus and said, Sir, when the water is troubled, when the water is troubled, it talks about lost chances. The miracle was happening right before his eyes. He had all the opportunity in his hands, but all those opportunities slipped away from him. You must have met people who would have failed in an exam once or twice. I very actively work among high school students every day in many, many high schools in Chennai city. I meet thousands of them. 
and there are students who go through seasons of failure i have met met students who have failed once twice even thrice but uh, if you just imagine this man had one chance a year to receive his miracle once a year the water is stirred that means he has lost 38 chances the pain of lost chances is unbearable this man lost all the chances that he had right before his eyes he saw everyone else getting well he saw everyone's life getting built but he was left to see all of them moving on and he was a man but lost chances number 2 when you read that verse once again the man said he said sir when the water is troubled i have no one to put me into the pool put me into the pool i would call this a man who not only lost his chances a man who was lacking capacity look at him his hands were working his eyes were fine his ears were working he could speak very well he could express himself to jesus about his problem very well but the only problem he had was his legs wouldn't work that one singular problem kept him arrested in a singular spot for 38 years i don't know who you are what you're going through but probably you're all fine with 99 different things but that one thing is troubling you and you know what that one thing has kept you arrested in a place for a long time when i go to schools and meet students i see very very studious very smart people who come from very good backgrounds you watch them tell their story they have got everything right except that one thing that one addiction with pornography that one addiction with drugs that one problem in the family that one situation that is not working in their life has stopped their entire progress when jesus met this man he was a man facing jesus with one singular challenge of capacity you know what sometimes when we go through problems in life we come to a big realization man can do many things you see a fan it can just bring the air down but man can bring the air down but he cannot stop a typhoon man can turn sea water into drinking water but he cannot stop the waves there's a limit for everything and sometimes when we go through problems we come to this realization yes i can handle so many different things but not this one thing this man could handle so many things but one thing challenge of capacity number 3 he had a challenge of cooperation look at that verse he beautifully says lord when i try to get into the pool there is not one person to help me go there what about his parents what about his siblings what about his friends when problems came everybody left when you have everything everybody will be with you when you get into a problem when you have an issue everybody wants to run away from you Everybody wants to be free. Nobody wants to get involved in that. This man went through the same thing. When he was going through dire problems, nobody was there to help him out. Nobody to show love, nobody to show care. Nobody to support him. He didn't ask them a million rupees. He didn't ask them wealth. He asked nothing. He just asked, "Would you just help me when the water is stirred? Would you help me to just get into the pool?" Nobody. Lastly, beautifully he says, It's a very, very moving statement. He says, Lord, while I'm coming, another steps before me. The fourth challenge this man was going through was competition. He was living in a competitive world. How long? For 38 years. Nobody gave him space. Hey, just imagine this. If somebody is there for 38 years, he's already a senior, right? There were juniors who came after him, got healed and just walked away. not one person ever thought let us give him a chance he has been here for 38 years let him get into the pool this time nobody 
a man who was having challenges with his capacity a man who was having challenges with his competition the bible says jesus came to him and you know what when did jesus come the bible says it was a sabbath day when people were not supposed to work or walk jesus walked down to him and said this is my hour for you sometimes god works in strange ways you may have come here with a ticket into this program or by invitation you came to watch a show you came to watch um, a nice performance you came probably to listen to nice music or you came just to worship but god may have bigger plans for you the beautiful thing is the bible says jesus saw him jesus inquired about him jesus asked him do you want to be made whole and finally jesus said something he said take up your bed and walk throw your imagination for a moment you meet somebody on the roadside who has been paralyzed for 38 years stayed put in one single spot tried everything nothing worked 38 years and you go to him and say pick up your bed and walk he would look at you surely and say what are you making trying to make fun of me what are you trying to tell me i have been trying for 38 years man you don't have to tell me to pick up my bed are you trying to make fun of me you're ridiculing me but jesus told him pick up your bed and walk there's something i want to let you know before i close there are some things only jesus can say i want to repeat there are some things only jesus can say and when jesus says that it will happen it will happen my friend as you're listening to me you may be going through these four challenges i've been talking to you about the challenge of lost chances you may be a broken young man here and i lost my chances god gave me 38 opportunities god gave me so many opportunities i let them pass by i lost them all i have a problem with my capacity i could do many things but this one thing is bothering me i'm not able to overcome that number 3 you may be saying ana i really want to push forward i really want to change i want to walk to my destiny but there's not one soul in my life who could say yes brother i want to walk with you i will help you out not one person who truly loves you and probably you may be going through a situation where you say ana Every time I try to make a difference I try to do something great I'm not able to withstand the competition If you're one like that this evening I'm calling you for a rendezvous with Jesus I'm calling you for an appointment with Jesus right here He didn't come just to inquire just to know and walk away He didn't just come here to just give you a few dollars or a few coins and say yes brother I'll be praying for you don't worry I hope the 39th time you will win no He's here to come and say something very powerful into your life no man can ever say and if that word comes out of his mouth towards your life your life will change We're going to close our eyes for a moment before we continue worshiping Jesus There may be one single young man, young girl listening to me and saying, "Anna, this is exactly the same thing I'm going through. I'm going through brokenness. I have been in this situation for a long, long time. I've tried everything, everyone, everywhere. Nothing has worked." I'm so happy I could hear a good news that Jesus can touch my life and speak a word to me. If you believe that, when all eyes are closed and all heads are bowed, If you say and I need that Jesus in my life I need the presence of God to touch me transform my situation and make me take up my bed and walk I need that Jesus in my heart when all eyes are closed I would love you to lift up your right hand for 2 seconds and put it down I'm going to pray for you Dear Lord Jesus How sweet is your presence tonight. 
we believe your word which declares that where two or three are gathered in my name I am there in the midst of you and we believe you are here you are so close to us even more than we can ever fathom you are right here in our midst and I thank you for the precious people who have lifted up their hand and said yes Jesus come and speak a word to my situation to my problem to my predicament and I pray that heart that soul will be touched by your word tonight I pray when they finish this concert and walk out of this ground they will not be walking out expecting someone to help them but they will handle their own situations with your strength taking up their own bed and walk into the destiny you have prepared for them and we thank you Lord because when we believe and we ask anything in faith according to your will it will be done to us and without faith without confidence tonight we say thank you Jesus for touching us
Put your hands together for Rohit Fernandez. Lord, we confess that we have wandered far from your purpose and plan and willingly walk. In the wrong direction We disobeyed your command Father forgive us Spirit come lead us Back to the way Back to the truth Back to the foot of the cross Show us the ancient Lead us along eternal highways We want to walk in the ways of Jesus We want to enter your rest Show us the ancient path Lead us along eternal highways Jesus, we want to enter your way. Lord, it's your mercy and good intentions that constantly calls us to you. Your infinite patience and kind correction You covered in love coming through You are a hope and a salvation You promised joy, you gave us grace And courage to carry the Display the glorious way of the cross. 
might be in the 90s uh, but it's a beautiful song by Sandy Patty and this is called For All the World. Put your hands together for Maxon.
joy with children of hope for all the world. Father of light, I'll be a light that you shine through. Cause you are the peace and you are the hope for all. Take before we show some charity. charity, compassion and mercy the way it's meant to be. Who will take the time for the ones who truly need and pray for the nation that's out on the street? What man? is greater than his brother when in Jesus' eyes we're all the same and I want the peace I want the love for all the world people of joy the children of hope for all Let the parts of peace swing out and pray the grace of God. We're so proud and privileged to have Timmy Madhukar in our band. Put your hands together for Timmy. And I found a brand 
may trust in Paul's Some may trust in Jeffrey Jets But we will trust in the name of our God Some may trust in Paul's Some may trust in Jeffrey Jets But we will trust in the name of our God Some may trust in horses Some may trust in chariots But we will trust in the name of our God Some may trust in horses Some may trust in chariots But we will trust in the name of our God In the name of Jesus our salvation lies Hear from heaven to answer every cry. Some may trust in horses, some may trust in chariots, but we will trust in the name of our God. We will trust in the Joy to 